Welcome to Myth Busters Down Syndrome Edition. My name is Erin Waddyham. Hi, my name is Dr. Katherine Garforth from Garforth Education. Hi, my name is Eleanor Stewart, and I'm from the Down Syndrome Resource Foundation. I'm the Director of Education and Services. And we're here to dispel some myths about Down Syndrome. People with Down Syndrome can't learn academics. I think the big myth around here is how we approach educating the individual. Because the most important thing to do is take an individualized approach to figure out their strength and weakness profile and cater our instruction to that profile to support them in the areas that they need support in for reading and math instruction. Yeah, and more importantly for, or specifically for people with Down syndrome, we know that um, intrinsic motivation is not their strength, right? So we need to use their interests and as you said, really individualize their education plans so that they are more engaged because if you can't engage the learner and keep their attention, then it's gonna be very challenging and slow moving forward to, to increase those skills in, in whatever academic area you're, you're working on. Um, and I think, I think that's been, that's our main approach here at the Down Syndrome Resource Foundation is really focusing on the individual, finding out their interests and more also like how they learn best, but using their interests to really engage them and get them into the, you know, we focus here on reading and math, but that's, you need to get them in because often what we see is the students with Down syndrome haven't been given that individualized um, plan or attention. And therefore you, you know, they've been, and I see that as one of the drawbacks of, of, or I think that's been a challenge with this whole inclusion movement is that there's this focus on keeping the students in the classroom, which is really important. But at the same time, we know, and the research, research says that individuals with intellectual disabilities learn best in a one-to-one -one, um, model. And so we really need to have that balance and be able to incorporate that into, into each individual's education plan for that support. Of course, but at the same time, we need to make sure that we're not removing them from some of the other core subjects like science and social mm -hmm. studies because they need the exposure in those classes to build the background knowledge and the information and vocabulary. Yeah. The vast amount of vocabulary knowledge learning happens when you're in the situation. It's not done through drilling vocabulary. It's being in that environment and hearing it naturally mm -hmm. and in different contexts. And using it and practicing it, yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the challenge with the way that our education set up is is finding that fine balance. When when is the right time to provide that student with that one on one instruction, and can it happen in the classroom? Does it work that way? And and again, it all goes down to how that individual learns best and what they need to to work on whatever goal has been you know has been decided that they want want to focus on. And you know some. I was just in a session recently where we were doing a Zoom class and it was in the hallway and that student was able to focus for some reason and it, it worked. That wouldn't have worked for me, but they were, we were able to do our reading session and they were able to do that. But some students, you know, need a, a quiet room with, you know, no distractions and it's about finding that right balance to meet whatever that academic goal is. Right. And I think it's important to mention, like you mentioned interests and you know what? Individuals with Down syndrome can very much have interests in academics. Uh, uh, as we'll see when we hear from our friend Aaron, he's interested in politics. So using that as a buy-in to help get him to practice other skills would be a, a great way. So Aaron, what do you think? Can people with Down syndrome learn academics? Yes, I can read. That's even more pointed thing in the world for history. So I can I, I can read of history books. I know James Charles died, but if we're guillotine, let's know that. But also I do math, but I'm not I'm not actually a master of math. Just my dad's a master, but not me. 
And I know two plus two is four. I know it's eight plus eight is 16. I know that's the easy word for me. It's easy memory to do. say, say. But I do politics because my brother from the USA, that's, a, that's why I follow politics. Because, so yeah, so I don't follow politics, the health. No, yeah, politics, that's it. So you can, and you do learn academics and you probably enjoy it too, right? Yeah. Or all these nightmares for uh, in politics. And again, somebody died or something like, um, Kobe Bryant died, crashed a helicopter and in fog or something. Because you have something in the world. Yeah, so you're, you follow current events and the news a lot too. Mm -hmm. 